And shalom, everyone, shalom. I want to welcome everyone to the house of the lost sheep of Israel. And I'm Elder Michael Johnson, the pastor over here. And today we're going to be going through a, a very good lesson, which, as I said before, we are going to go forward and we will not be turning back. So a lot of things that might go out today is with these parables as we continue to go forward. Uh, hopefully that many people went back and looked at the old video because it'll help you out a lot on this one. But before I do, I do have a couple of announcements to make because right after this teaching, we're going to be going over into Zoom. We're going to go into Zoom. I'm going to mention this again after the teaching. We're going to go into Zoom and we're going to be distributing out people who have signed up already. The the emails to where you can have KJB KJBU emails to where you can access our SharePoint area to where you can get more specialized teachings and get more spiritual meanings and everything that's going on when we teach. Those are going to be back there and then you can go back there at your leisure to where you can do specialized studies in precept mastery. We have that going. So if you have already signed up, the older people that we do have are the seniors now, I know I'm going to get ridiculed for what I just said, um, but our seniors, we're going to allow them to come back there. 
and to where if they haven't filled out yet, I ask them to come back there to where they can get KJBU emails because the majority of them, I know who they are. So you guys don't actually have to do it, but I just need you to come back there to where we can get your information or forward your information to either to um, Sister Brown and you can catch her at bbrown at kjbu.org and you give her that info, your name and your your email address stuff there and she can make sure that it happened. As well as um, you'll see a lot of new things that's going on. But we we not done yet. We not done yet. We got some other things we're getting ready to do which is actually getting ready to change the entire uh, web system or as the World Wide Web based on how the Bible is set up and everything else. So we will be one of the first actually on the web doing what what most people want to see. And it's going to be very um, good to help a lot of people. And it's going to be used throughout the world. The other one is we also want to make sure that we want to thank um, uh, Deacon Micah for all the stuff that he do. I know people keep emailing this brother. And this Deacon Micah, he, he he's also a very busy, busy man. But what we got to remember is Deacon Micah is he's over the SharePoint. We want everybody to understand that. Yes, he is over SharePoint. He's the, he's the main person that's over it. And me and him share, you know, co the same code things and everything to do with it. However, please don't send those emails to Deacon Micah. Deacon Micah is taking care of many things, but we want to allow that brother to take care of of, of the other things that he need to take care of and everything that you need to do or anything that you need to you know to to be addressed back there that will go to sister brown or sister larry and if, if it need to go up further then they will actually move that to deacon micah but please you know if you guys are sending them to him and looking for them to do them i can almost guarantee you deacon micah is going to forward them back the sister brown so with that one we're just hoping that everybody understand that because we're moving through a lot of things right now and then also we have um deacon q deacon q he um his his first name he's actually going with my brother well my brother he's the same way and um deacon q his um name is deacon quentin but he's going back and he's going to just going back to using his regular middle name and his middle name is Emmanuel. So what we doing, as he said, he, he said, Hey, I'm gonna go back and I'm just going to use my middle name. And so we're going to change some things and we're going to just put him as Deacon Emmanuel. The same thing is I respect that. And that's his actual real name because it's his middle name. It's a real name. It's not a made up name. So we're going to go back and we're going to use that as Deacon Emmanuel. So besides that, I just probably call him Deacon E. That's just me personally, because I just call him Deacon Q. But the main thing is we're going to do that name change, that name switch, and that we want to make sure everybody is aware of that. And then other than that, we want to make sure that after this, immediately after this, we're going to be going in and you can see the link at the bottom in the description to where you can go over into the Zoom area. And if you don't, if you've been trying to get into class and you've been trying to make sure that you've been trying to tie to some of these specialized teaching, because as I said, in which you'll see, Sister Brown don't put in all the spiritual meanings in these chats anymore. So she only going to be putting in a few, but all of them plus other ones that you need to know will be back there. And also with your notes and everything else, because we have specialized notes to where we can do it in a certain way to where it will highly elevate everything for you. One second, I need to, I want to sit there and see. How is that? Um, I just got to note it. And hopefully that is going up a little bit better. So I just got a quick message from one of my elders. So, 
I want to make sure, and I appreciate it. I want to make sure that everybody uh, from here out, when you want to do something, we we need it to run through because you can actually help us out a great deal now. Because if you can route things to 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 Sister Brown or Sister Larry, you can actually get to us a lot faster because they a lot of stuff that we need done. Most stuff is going to already be already headed to them. So that'll help you out a great deal. And back to now what we was looking at originally is the parable revealed. And and when we look at this parable here, this parable about Leah and Rachel, (laughs) hopefully you looked at about two years ago. I actually did Leah and Rachel and actually showed people what was going on. Because they were talking about Leah was had a lazy eye, she was ugly, and and not understanding really what a parable is and how it was taught in the world. But now we learning things about it, and now we then came up to this point. And the reason why I said we come up to a point to where there's no return. And a lot of things that we got continually moving forward on. If you need to really get some information, you don't really have to go back and look at something to really understand where we're coming from, to really understand what I'm saying, to understand exactly where I am coming from. Because this parable, we're going to reveal some things that's going to educate everybody. We're going to reveal some things to where now you're going to start seeing exactly how parables work because this entire world is set up for similitude and we got to understand those things everything that you see here will will one day perish it was only set up here to teach us for our learning to help us to do what we need to do to get back to the most high so as i once taught this lesson and, and we taught on this same topic about leah and rachel in Rachel was more beautiful and she was well favored woman than than Leah was. But we gotta find out what that is. And then this lesson not only tells you about Leah and Rachel and on the surface, but despite that, God said that he will speak to us in, in parables. He's gonna speak to us in parables. We not Moses. So he gonna talk to us in parables. He's going to talk to us in vision and dreams. Those vision and dreams are going to come in parables. And then we need to be able to put those similitudes together to where he's going to tell us the story on what we need to do. So the reality of this matter, and when you even get to Leah, we got to find out some things. So with the same as the sisters putting in, you need to have your pencils, need to have some paper, because we got to pick up a lot of documentation. We got to get a lot of facts that's in the Bible. And then we're going to put them all together. And then you're going to see how this story actually lays out. So we got to run through this first, and then we got to start going through it. So the reality of this is, one, Leah was not ugly. We we got to make that a straight-out fact. She was not nowhere close to ugly. But it also, we got to remember, she had no defects. But nevertheless, people read the scriptures claiming that this woman had a lazy eye. And I want to show you some parables and show you something that was a parable. Most people don't know it was a parable, but I'm going to show it to you to where you see the parable as it is. And I'm going to take you over to We're going to look at we're going to look at uh, Matthew chapter 27. We're going to look at 27, but we're going to pick it up at verse 16. We're going to start breaking down because this is a parable within itself. And we want to understand what it's saying. And we're talking about this guy named Barabbas and this is when they had Yahweh or Jesus they had them both in prison but it tells us here we're going we're gonna to pick up on this and we're going to find out something it said they had then including they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas so Barabbas was a notable prisoner and notable don't mean nothing more than he was well known and he was notorious for what he does that's all it's talking about he was a notable. He, he was well known for what he do. He was a, he was a good known crook. He was a good known. He was he was good at what he does. Is what it's telling you. 
but it gets better. It gets better as we go down through here. Verse 18. And it says, therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will ye that I release unto you? Barabbas or Yahweh, who, which is called Christ. So Pilate is giving us an option. He was given the Hebrew people, the Jew of all the land. He was giving them a choice. And we looking at that right here. Pilate saying, you know, which one do you want to release? Barabbas or, or Yahweh? Shai? And meaning that he was called. <clears throat> and the reason he said called the Christ because he was appointed or he was named because of the way that he, he lived, his culture. So that's what they were doing. But let's get a little bit more information and we can continue to go more. It says, for he knew who? Pilate. Pilate knew what was going on because Pilate had talked to him earlier. He said, for he knew that for envy, they had delivered him for envy. They did that. Think about that. Pilate knew what was going on, but for envy, it was a whole nother thing there. So we want to understand what, what, what is happening there and, and really get a better understanding on what was happening. But we want to make sure for envy when people get turned in on something. So let's take a closer look at this and we'll see what was happening there. When you look at this in um, verse 19, and we're going to start pulling some information, which is what this parable is all about. It says, when he was set down on the judgment seat, because he, he was literally going to teach the people and give them doctrine. This is what he's doing. It says, his wife sent unto him saying, have thou nothing to do with that just man. Don't have nothing to do with this just man. Meaning don't have nothing to do. And his wife is same thing as a spirit. And he's saying don't have nothing to do with this just this righteous man. Don't do, do anything with this man. Don't you get caught up in this. Don't get caught up into what they're doing. And it says more. It says, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Because of this Yahweh shy guy, I don't suffer a whole lot of stuff behind this guy. She's telling you right up front what is going on, what we got to go through, what we what is happening. But as we go, we want to make sure that we get all this together. It gets a little bit better now. They're gonna start telling us now because now we understand what the details of the parable is, but we're going to see what's happening here. It says, but the chief priests, including elders. Now, mind you, these are Pharisees that's out there. These are people who was out there teaching the people that, that you have people who holding these men as men of God, even in this realm today. The same thing. These are chief priests. These are people who's over churches. These are people who's over these places was doing, was sitting there telling you about God and these chief priests, including you know, persuaded. I want you to understand. And these are priests. These are ministers, intercessory. These are supposed to be intermediary between people and God. Actually, Let's look at something. I'll tell you something before we move forward. Let's do, let's go over here and look at uh, Psalms. And we're going to look at Psalms. We're going to look at 104, but we want to go to verse 26. In the same thing you see in, in the church, and the same thing I was telling you before, it says, there go those ships, there go, th there is that Leviathan whom thou has made to play therein. These chief priests is in those places. These chief priests are there. <laughs> They're there to do what they want to do. And they persuading you. They persuading you to do something. As we look at Colossians, and we're going to check this out in verse 22. 
end is telling you right there, which all are to perish with the using all or to perish with the using taste, not want, not handle, not don't, 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 don't taste this righteousness. Don't you get into that? Don't handle that. And it's all going to perish after the commandments, including doctrines of men. There go that Leviathan. He's in that building. And he's and that's his little playhouse. And these chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude because the multitude was mainly going there. So they was able to persuade people from the truth. Think about that. It says, persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas this notable, this well-known, notorious, crazy person, murder and everything else. And they persuaded the multitude to ask for Barabbas, to ask for this man. These are supposedly men of God. You can, you can put this whole silhouette picture together. The same thing with Martin and the same thing with any preacher that you go inside of a building and he's saying, this is a church. They will persuade you to choose Barabbas, the things that's going to perish with the using and all those things are going to perish. But with all those things, you still going to sit there and many people who holds to a building and holds to preachers and buildings and all these things, 100% you will be persuaded. You are persuadable. And it says, including destroy your how I destroy, destroy Jesus. Yeah. This is what we do. We'll do this in a heartbeat. We'll do this and won't think nothing about it. People will train from a child to do this. To choose the evil for good and good for evil. We're persuaded to do this. So we look at this and as it goes on and with this, within this parable, it says the, the governor answered, including said to them, whether of thy twain, whether of thy two, will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. They said, Barabbas. This well-known guy, well-known, not for good, for evil. The same, I have to turn to note to this because I, I want to address it. And, and the same thing that we have to look at. I just want you to, we're going to take off for, for this for one second and go back to it. But it's talking about the same thing. And it's talking about this Sesame Street that was going on in Philadelphia about how they do these little black children. And these parents take them there and then they film them and then they film their child getting the heart broken. And then the child look back at the parent and the parent laugh it off. That's foolishness. 100% foolishness because you have the voice to let management know. And then you don't put up with their shenanigans or the stupidity where they're put out saying they didn't see this and they don't see that. But then while the parents are so 100% being foolish doing what they do, because no matter what they'll see it and you still take your child to that place. Take them right back to Mola. And then you want to sit there and say they're wrong. No, you're wrong. If you already knew that they like that, why are you going to go give them your money, take your child to Mola, so then your child want to see this, 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 this little crazy, silly animal, and you know he's going to be disrespected. But you'll take him there. And you'll spend money to do it. And all you have to do is don't do it. Don't take your child there. Don't turn the TV. When you sit there, no, we don't look at that. He's bad. That's all you got to teach us. He's bad. Big Bird, bad. Cookie, bad. 
all of them bad. All you gotta do is teach that child. These are not, these are monsters that have something against you. But we don't do that. We too scary to do those things. And that's why I say, and, and, and I have to roll with so many times. I don't want to roll with what Dr. Chau has said about black people in America. Cause he was very direct with me, but I, I, a lot of stuff. I don't want to, I don't want to, I, I wanted to just hardcore go against him. And I couldn't because we prove everything that he said thus far, we proven him true. Everything that came out of, he proven that to be true. He said, he said, he said, they can spit on our face and we'll tell them, thank you. Proven to be true. Proven to be true. They can sit there and, and rape our children and we'll tell them, thank you. We still love you. Proven to be true. They, you sit there, want to kill Jojo down the street for looking at your child wrong. They sit right there. You paid to go into a building and you paid to get an experience or something else. And they disrespect your child. And the only thing you sit there and say, you get on social media and I can't believe they did that. Besides going to that place, sit there, no, one, you give me my money back. And two, I'm going to let everybody I know not to attend your place and I'm going to show them why. And I'm going to put the video everywhere everywhere you guys are monsters but no we can't do that so he said we're some of the most docile foolish people that he have known proven to be true why the video shows it his video right there and the same thing here we sat there we can't say we don't do this because we sat there and we sat there and said, we want Barabbas. We want Barabbas. Pilate told us seven times. He didn't see nothing wrong with us. He didn't see nothing wrong with Yahweh Shai. But we let some priests talk us otherwise. As it says in verse 22, Pilate said unto them, what shall I do then unto Yahweh, which is called the Christ. What should I do with this guy? What, what do, I do I need to do with this guy? They said unto him, let him be crucified. Let him be punished. Let him suffer punishment. This is what, the, that's all they're saying. Let this man suffer punishment. Who did nothing. I need you to put that, this whole incident here with Barabbas when the, he's a notable thief, notable murderer, everything. He's notable for being notorious because that's what notable is, notorious. I want you to keep that in mind. I want you to put that in your basket and you put that next to your side because we need that as we go through. We need that as we go through and we got to sit there and we're going to look at another piece and Let's go over here to first Peter. I want to show you something there. Actually, we're on first Peter chapter two, verse 23. <clears throat> first Peter chapter two, verse 23. We want to see something else. And it tells us here. It says who, when he was revived, really, when he, the, when this revealed did like this, what they saying here? Revive not again? Are you serious? He was abused. He was blasphemed. He was mocked. That's what this is saying. People overlook what really is going on. So we want to look at what's so Yahweh shy, and we looking at still crisis in this man, and he was revived and not revived again. When he suffered, he threatened not. He threatened not. Gave, he didn't gave them warning, but committed himself to whom that judges righteously, that teaches righteously. So he committed himself still, no matter what to God. That's who he was committed to. 
who taught righteously. Yahweh, he always made that clear. They doing something crazy, but Yahweh, he, he made sure that he wasn't going to go outside of scripture and take things into his own matters and do the things that he want to do. So he said he, he committed himself to, to the most high. To the most high is who he committed to. And the reason why he did is right here. See, we want to look at everything right now all precept together we putting this puzzle together making sure we understand then why the mindset that he was in as he was going through it because it's because most high said this he says to me vengeance including recompense vengeance including recompense deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 30 telling you right here i mean 35 i'm sorry 32 verse 35 recompense their foot their desire shall slide in due time for the day of their calamity is at hand. Their desire shall slide in due time. Don't worry about it. He's telling you that vengeance belongs to me. Don't you do nothing to him. Let me take care of this. Let me take, when I, when I take care of it, this is how you say, when I take care of it, see, it's going to be a whole different ball game when he takes care of it. But if you put any type of effort like that in there, he going to step back and then whatever you happen, yours might be for a short, 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 short term. His is an eternal term. It says for that day of their calamity is at hand, including the things that shall come upon them, make haste, make haste. But why, but why is he even saying that? And the reason why, when people intervene with, 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 with his business, he'll step back. But if you don't, and he handle it, <laughs> as he said right here in, in Luke chapter 17, verse 2, he said this, and he made sure he was clear about that. He said, it is better for him that a millstone hanged about his neck and cast into the sea that should offend one of these little ones. He's saying it, it, it ain't going to work. It's a, it's a good start. It's a good start. You mess with one of them little ones that is rolling with him, it's better you do that. I'm just letting you know ahead of time. It's not going to work. Because the deepest part of the sea, the sea going to give up the dead. But I'm just saying it's a good start. It's not going to work, but it's, it is a good start. It is a good start. You can, you can hide for a minute, but you ain't going to hide forever. And the reason why these little ones is mainly these here. And, and I want to show you, make sure we see who what, what he's talking about. Ezekiel, we're going to find this in Ezekiel and find that right here. in Ezekiel chapter 3, but we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Find out more so what he's talking about. And we're going to see here. And it says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. And they do their little ones in. What was Yahweh I doing? <laughs> he came to preach. The kingdom of God is at hand. And they hung this man on a tree. <laughs> I'm telling you. You, 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 we can't make this stuff up. He began to preach at about 33 years old. <laughs> and they hung this man on a tree. I mean, you can't, you, you can't make this kind of stuff up. We, we take Barabbas. Why do you think so many of them around you? You got churches on every street corner. You got these places. And we sit there. And if we go into these churches, and people go, well, I don't go. We used to go in there. If you supported a preacher, the church building, we did. 
If we did any of those things, we chose Barabbas. And if we chose Barabbas, that's why it's so much sin in this world. I want you to pay attention to what's getting ready to go down because we haven't got off of Leah. We ain't got off of Rachel. But we're trying to understand the parable so we're getting a lot of tools together to where when we say I need a I need a wrench, I need a 5 16 it's all right there in the toolbox. Because then everything going to make sense to you. But the main problem is if we went into these churches, we supported preachers, we did these things, we also, including, we also supported this. If you support any preacher in a building, I don't care who it is, if he's in the building and he's preaching and that's his normal place of worship where he's going to do what he do there and telling you about God, he's a worker of faith, Satan. I don't care who he is. And you are supporting adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, and idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, ill emotions, and, and seditions, and heresies, and envy, and murder, and you, all these things such like. You, you, you enter these things. You say you're not, but you are. We'll say, oh no, we're not, but you are. Because we are committed the same thing. And and we'll do things such like. So we need to take this a little bit closer. A little bit closer. Because if we're doing that, then we're committing ourselves to our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our wives, our children. Why is this so, so much the point? Because then they can persuade us using precepts of men to make you fall for things of the flesh and not the things of God. Hopefully we, we, we getting this. I'm trying to lay this out to where all the goats can get this. If these can, you can be committed to, to those, then you can be persuaded by precepts of men. told you many people tell you in times past and with such things will not inherit the kingdom of God flesh and blood cannot please God flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God but people will persuade you using precepts of men because they want you to satisfy their flesh by having you do things and things that that, that really just pertains to them And it help you understand Leah and Rachel as we continue. And not only that, it's another one that we got to really keep in mind who is very difficult and most people really don't get the understanding, but we really want to understand them. We really want to understand them is, is Jacob. Jacob is an interesting person. But just like people with Jacob, like Rachel, was more beautiful and well favored and despised Leah. The scripture also held like the people, but Jacob, her husband, was held in the same contempt for Leah. She was hated. Let me let me let me let me show you something going on here. We, we want to get some of this understanding and really get it closer. So I'm going to take you back over here. We're going to look back in Genesis chapter 29. Drop down to verse 31 and we're going to, going to pick it up right there. Scripture states, and it says, And the Spirit of God saw that Leah was hated. She saw that Leah was hated. She was despised. She was hated. So he he opened up her womb. But Rachel was barren. We're gonna find out what all this is talking about in a second. We're gonna get all we're gonna find out what all this is actually talking about in a second. Leah womb. 
had to be open. I want you to write that down. See, he said he opened up a womb, but Leah's womb had to be open. Had. He had to do that. But we're going to find out why. You don't say it right there, but you but he gonna he gonna implement it while you see it. And it was something you really have to think on. Something you really have to consider. Cause when you see this, it's a comparison to Rachel. Leah was able to give birth in a larger number, even of the sons of Jacob. She was able to give more in birth. The Bible shows that Leah not Rachel, it's actually Jacob's wife. You could only get one. But it says he had two wives. He had, but we're going to find out all about that too. But you'll notice that Leah was buried. Leah was buried with Jacob and Rachel was buried in another, another place. Now, if that was true, as people was continually claim and to show you how these patriarchs work, it wouldn't have been no problem where Rachel and Leah would have been buried side by side by Jacob. Wouldn't have been no problem. The same as with Abraham and Ketra and Sarah. Ketra would have been, had no problem where she would have been laid side by side by Abraham. And on the other side would have been Sarah. But Ketra was a concubine. But people don't understand it, but we have people who comes into the text and they put things there that is not there. So the question had to be answered about these two women, Leah and Rachel. And they have even have a history of being hostile. So they had a hostile relationship with one another but it's not hard to see. It's not hard at all to see. But the best way we can do this is start digging in and start putting in some work about this flesh. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 17, it tells us that it says, for flesh lust against the spirit and spirit against the flesh. These two are contrary to one another so that ye cannot do things they that ye do that ye would clearly telling you I don't care who you are or where you are if you is having conflict with another person I don't care who it is brother, sister, husband, wife mama, daddy son, daughter I don't care who it is if you are at a fight you had a contrary moment. You're contrary. One is operating in the flesh. The other one's operating in the spirit. One is operating all flesh. The other one's operating all spirit. I don't care who they are. The easiest way to see it is the one when they're sitting there talking about flesh and they're talking about me, 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 me. That's flesh. These are things they want according to the flesh because they want you to do the things desired of the flesh. That's the easiest way to see it. That's why it's so important to where this womb had to be open. It had to be. Because the flesh lusts against the spirit and spirit against the flesh. The contrary. So one flesh, we have to see, and it operates in the spirit. But we have to examine that to really see what's going on. So we have to examine the narrative to see the depth and the level and venturing further into the sanctuary of the holy place of God, to which we're going to actually end up seeing the parable in its entirety. We're going to scare half the people half to death, but that's okay. But we have to proceed through this study to answer the question. So into the question, and then we look at how it was brought up by this parable. And we have to proceed further. And many people want to go further to see what God is saying. So we have to go into the clouds to understand the parable between Leah and Rachel. Got to understand it. Let's, let's take this a little bit closer. 
We're going to look at Genesis chapter 29, but we're going to park right there, verse 17. We're going to go right there. We're going to start going down. And it says this. It says, Leah was tender-eyed, and, but Rachel was beautiful, including well-favored. So we're going to find out what all this is. We're going to start unpacking some of this. So Leah, we want to make sure you write it down. Leah, it goes down where you can also see her as a gazelle, but her main purpose is a cow. Cow. I want you to pay attention to that. And with Rachel, Rachel is a you, E W E, which you still got to remember that is a sheep. And when you see the cow was tender, it's weak and loving and in the eyes of understanding. That's what it's actually getting into. So Rachel is the sheep. She was beautiful. Beautiful is talking about nothing more than desirable. Including she was well favored. She was accepted. Same as Barabbas. He was accepted. Leah was not desirable for or accepted. Though she was loving but was weak. Due to her sister, the one that's been accepted. In all ways. Desirable to be around. Worldly. But we look at the next part. We want to make sure we put everything in here because we want to put all the players in here. It says, including Jacob loved Rachel. He promised Rachel. But what did he promise? He he said this. He, he promised Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. He made that clear to, made that clear to Laban. He promised he's going to serve seven years, meaning he's going to serve until completion the years for this one sheep. I want this one sheep. And he was going to go down to this one man, which will he nourish this one sheep. So we want to understand a lot more on what's going on. And we're going to start getting into some deep water. So we want to make sure and, I'm going to try to make sure I slow down to where we can get it. And I don't want to rush through it to where we can understand it. In Isaiah chapter 7, I want you to see something. Chapter 7, but I want you to see verse 21. Really important on what you're going to see. Verse 21, what you're going to see. And this is where the parable is going to get deep on what we need to make sure. What we need to make sure of is right here. And it's telling, it says, including it shall come to pass in that day, in that day, that a man shall nourish a young cow. Including two sheep. Everybody with me? I want you to stay with me on this because I'm going to try to go as slow as possible to where we can get it. But a man going to nourish a young cow and two sheep. And we got to figure out what's going on with Leah. We got to figure out what's going on with Rachel. And this is going to help us. Now, we got to remember Jacob is the surplanter. So I want you to keep that in mind. I want you to remember he nourished. So he nourished, he means he preserved alive the cow, including two sheep. The cow is Leah, the sheep is Rachel, but then the other sheep, (laughs) <laughs> the other sheep is actually is actually Bela. It's actually uh, Rachel's uh, handmaid. But we're going to find that out in one second. We're going to find that out in one second. But let's go down to verse 22. And we're going to start pulling this up and then we're going to get some other information. And it's telling us, it says, And it shall come to pass for the abundance of milk, for the abundance of milk, it says, uh, they shall give he eat butter and for butter and honey and everyone that eateth that is left in the land. That's clear as day, but we got to figure it out. We got to figure it out. So we're going to unravel some of this stuff. And it says, so looking at that for the abundance, we talking about the multitude, the milk is talking about the nourishment and learning 
that shall be given to the children the learning and then we got the butter but the main part about the butter is really 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 weird on how you see it but you got to see when we're looking at paleo hebrew not over there in strong concordance that all those stupidity books is really silly and you see this it's talking about sour milk and fatness keep that in mind sour milk and fatness but it's telling you right there it's telling you honey honey meaning the same thing is sweet and bitter sweet and bitter yeah, hopefully we all get that actually i'll tell you what let's do this let's do this and doing something we're gonna go to side note but it's still gonna be the same thing because this is gonna actually help explain it uh isaiah chapter 7 verse 15 i believe not 14 but we want 15 yeah, we want this one. Verse 15, this here. Now, it's telling us right here about the butter and honey and all that stuff. So it says, butter and honey shall he, shall ye learn, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. That's the point. The sweet and bitter, we need to know which one we need to choose. We need to be up on that. We need to make sense of that. And the main thing is, it's telling, it says, for before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhortest shall be forsaken of both her kings. Wow, that's a trip with both her rulers. It's going to be forsaken. So it brings us back over here. They gonna learn butter. They gonna learn it is butter. The sour milk and fatness. And for that same thing, they gonna sit there and for the butter and honey, everyone you see butter including honey. Shall everyone eat? Everybody with me there? Everyone going to eat this. Everyone going to learn it is that is left in the land. You're going to learn it is bitter and sweet. You got to. We have no choice. Everyone that's going to be left in the land. Everybody got me. I want everybody to make sure that you, you, you understand where this is coming from. And he goes on a little bit more. We're going to see how this parable is playing out. It says, and it should come to pass in that day that every place shall be where there were a thousand, look at this here, where a thousand vines and thousand silverlings, it shall be for briars and thorns. We got to unpack that. That's why I say we got to do a lot of unpacking. We just constantly unpacking, but we want to know what everything is talking about. And when we look at this, and it's telling you what it's for. Thousands of vines, but I want to show you something, and then we're gonna come back over there. I'm gonna show you something. Let's look at Exodus in chapter twenty. Exodus chapter twenty, but we're gonna start at verse four. We're gonna start at verse four. I want to show you this. It says, thou shalt not make unto thee any grieving image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You see what he's talking about right here. And that's what we need to make sure we're doing, including verse 5. And he's telling, and thou shalt not bow thyself down to them, nor serve them, be a servant to them. For the spirit of thy God, of your God, I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquities, the acts of sin upon the children unto the third, including the fourth generation of them that hate me. Because you're doing it, then you hate God. Then he's the hated one. You're doing this for him. you being Rachel on one side. So you hating him. Well, you're hating Leah, but you're going for Rachel of the world. Yeah, I see the point. We're getting closer to where we're going to understand Rachel in a minute. But this is what we're doing. These are things we're doing. 
in watch what happens here in verse 24. It says with arrows, including the bows shall men come thither with arrows, with visions and dreams in bowls, these deliverers or these prophets, the similitudes and parables shall men come. It's interesting, isn't it? The reason this is so interesting, because I want to show you something that's buried away. And I want to take you way over here. Because we're going to see something shall men come, but I want to show you something in Genesis. The reason why, I want to show you how those visions and dreams and those bowls work. So we're going to go to Genesis chapter 45. And, and I'm trying to make sure I'm not going too fast for anyone. I want to make sure I'm not going too fast for anyone because I want to make sure we're doing okay. And we'll see this now because it's talking about Joseph, who Joseph had dreams and he, he, he was going through these things. But we want to see him. It says now, for that reason, be not grieved. And this is Joseph talking to his brothers. Because his brothers, they, they, they hated Joseph. And they, they, they sold him to the Ishmaelites. And then they, the Ishmaelites took him down there into Egypt, put him in bondage. But what happened here, Joseph is telling them, now for that reason, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. You see, I'm going to tell you, that's, that's, that takes a lot for someone who is that wise to know. For something his brothers did, and what his brothers did for bad, it still came out good. Not for their sakes. It was for the sakes where, where God was working. It didn't have nothing to do with what they was doing because they, what they was doing was bad. But God already had plans. Let's look at something and find out a little bit more about, about this, this man, Joseph. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 37. We're going to pick this up at verse 4. And the same thing as I said, these, these, these bows and arrows. We're going to see this right here, in verse 4. And you see how they, his brothers really couldn't stand Joseph. He says, and when he, brother and saw that his father loved him, and talking about Joseph. Because you look at verse 3, it's it clear that for you in verse 3. It says, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. So this is clear. This is a clear statement. And it says, when his brethren saw that, it, that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated Joseph him and could not speak peaceably to him every time they open their mouth it's always it's heat coming out it's, it's, it's heat coming to him I don't care what Joseph said whatever Joseph said heat was coming behind them, them, them mother boys to Joseph this is the same thing and Joseph will tell you a dream that's what Joseph was doing he was telling dreams and the problem is people had the biggest problem when God is running something through some, some person and they don't like the person that's being ran through, <clears throat> they have an issue with it. Why? That's none of your business. That's God's business. But then, no, uh, no, it would have been better. It would have went through him. It would have went through this person. It would have went through that person. Now, you shouldn't have went through you. You, 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 you're Satan. You're the devil. Don't run it through this one. Run it through that one. I, this one I like. Give me Barabbas. Interesting. Interesting. I, I, I even be compared and be compared against. People even compare me against uh, uh, many times Gino, which is stupid within itself. How are you going to compare me against somebody who's beneath me? It's, it's odd, but really crazy. But people will sit there and talk about how well this man who's in the building, who speaks in Babel, who believes in eating pork, who do everything contrary to what God says, but they hold this man at a high level. This is interesting. comes out a very, very interesting way. 
And then you compare that same man to me who do none of those. It's not in my culture. It's not in my lifestyle. So it become interesting. And same thing here. Same identical thing here. We look at that and we'll go through it. So when you look at this here, we see this and Joseph actually started talking. And we want to tell you some things. And he says, and Joseph dreamed a dream, including he told it to his brother. Now you already know they hate him. He actually tells you, it says, and they hated him the more. The more dreams he told them, the more he hated them. <laughs> Bottom line. The more you tell them, the more you hate them. Look at verse 7. He says, and he said unto them, Here, I pray you this dream, which I have dreamed. And he proceeded to tell them about this dream. We're going to read down. To, we're going to read it down and see some of it. He says, For remember, we were binding sheaves in the field. And, and lo, the sheave arose, including also stood upright. And remember, our, your sheaves stood around about and made obstacles to my sheaf. Meaning they bowed down to his. <laughs> what I don't get is Joseph knew they can't stand him. Joseph knew they hated Every time they say something, heat coming out of, out of their mouth. Joseph still had to tell them the dang parable. He still had to tell them the dream. And all he's doing is making them more angry, more angry, more angry. But let's go down to verse 8. It says, And his brother said unto him, Shall thou in, in works and deeds uh, reign over us? They're asking the question. Or should thou in deeds and works have dominion over us? Including, they hated him yet the more for his dreams, <laughs> including for his words. The more he talked, you, so you can see the Most High just sitting there, just making them more and more and more and more angry. And they're getting hot. And they're getting, and they just hating on, boy, see, because Simeon and Levi, they were, they were going to do something to this man. And, and, and Reuben's actually saved this man. Uh, verse 9, it says again, it says, including he dreamed yet another dream. And look who he want to tell. <clears throat> he got to tell it to his brother and told it to his brother and said, remember, I have dreamed a dream more. And remember the sun and the moon and the 11 stars <laughs> made accident unto me. <clears throat> so now he's saying the son, the dad, and the mom, and the 11 stars, all his brothers, they done bowed down to Joseph. That's what Joseph's saying. So now everybody had disarray. All hell is breaking loose. And now his dad jumps in. His dad jumps in there. Because he's telling it around everybody. And he told it to his father, including his brother. So he told all he told it to everybody. And he said, and, and, and his father rebuked him. So Jacob rebuked him. But you don't see something. Jacob rebuked him openly. Watch, but watch what they, but I want you to check I want you to check out Jacob because Jacob as he rebuked him openly watch what he did though and he said unto him what is this dream that thou has dreamed hell I can't control my dream pop I just dreamed it you can't control a dream shall I including thy mother including thy brethren indeed come and bow down ourselves to thee to the earth are you serious, Joseph? <laughs> I'm telling you, Joseph stayed in trouble. And then he says, including his brother and envy them. So now they hot. But watch, you see right here, this real little key here. See, that's a full thought there. But you see right here, it says, but his father observed his saying. So I said, now like, you know, this Joseph, he, he, he's, a, he's a different kid. No, uh, yeah, okay. All right, I'm going to rebuke him in front of everybody, but no, I'm going to kind of put this in my back pocket. That's what he's doing. 
That's what he's doing. So when we sit there and we look at these, these arrows and these bows, men shall come thither because of the land shall become desolate. In desolate, in <clears throat> these briars and thorns, you want to understand what those are. Because briars and thorns is just telling you about briars is wasteland. And the thorns is desolate and ruined ones. So the land should become what? Wasteland, desolate, and ruined ones. That's all it's telling you. It's telling you this right here in the parable. <clears throat> Excuse me. To where we can understand. And as he's talking about what's going to happen. In the main part of the problem, why we become desolate and become wasteland. As he's telling us right up there before, I told him about how we are and what we're about. But I want to show you the same thing when he said earlier about the silverlings. The silverlings and what he was talking about. Let's, let's pull in some more stuff because totally we got, we, got, we got a lot of work we have to put in to where we can understand the parable in its fullness. And that's the most everything anybody should always want. You want to understand the parable in its fullness. In Isaiah chapter 1, and picking up at verse 22, it gives us another key to where we can use it. And it's right there. It's right there in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 22. That's our key right there. Thy silver is become dross. Thy wine mixed with water. That's what, that's what happened. And it became dross. So silver is become dross. And that means our faith became mixed with water talking about the knowledge and the understanding of what's going on and that's what it became so it became dross because our knowledge became mixed up with stuff from the ground it became mixed up with all this stuff from the ground to help us to even get more into everything we have to keep pulling keys we have to keep pulling precepts to keep digging, to keep digging, to keep digging, to keep digging, to find out exactly what that puzzle is. And we find it, and it's buried away, and found that piece of the puzzle right here in Ezekiel chapter 22, picking it up at verse 17. It says, In the word of the Spirit of God came unto me, saying. So the word, which is the Spirit of God, which is Jehovah, came and it comes saying something but we want to understand what this is he said son of man the house of Israel is become dross the house of Israel is become dross serving a man and I want to make sure we really understand what's going on the reason we become dross because we didn't took in we didn't taken in the stuff of the ground I think about that. We taking in things of the ground and why we do this for whatever reason, because you have to really remember, and this is the biggest issue that we go through to this day. I'm going to show you, um, we're going to look at something in Mark and then we're going to come right back, but it's a real simple analogy to where we can get it. And please understand what this is saying as we go through, as we go through, I just highlighted it. But then I want everybody to mark it. Yes or no. Everybody should get this. It says, for even the son of man, the servant of man, which is the word of God, when you precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, when you do it that way and you do it perfectly, God is speaking, not man. God is speaking because he's telling you what he wants you to know. That's why you see it's nothing for us to say about, well, me, 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 because it's not because it's not about me. It's about those scriptures. So he's telling you right here for even the servant of man, which is the word, which is Jehovah, come not to be ministered unto. He didn't come to learn what you want to teach him. He didn't come for that. He's not here for that. He's not here to. See what you got to say. He's not here to 
oh, this is the modern day place of this. This is the modern day place of this. This is the what's going to happen later. This is what's going to. He didn't come for that. Nowhere close. He's telling you. He said, but to minister, but to minister. He's being very upfront, including to give life and ransom for many. That's what he came to do. But people will sit there because Israel has become dross. We've become defiled because that's all dross is. It's defiled, it's polluted. It tells us right here. The house of Israel became dross. All they are brass. Think about that. Brass. Brass is the strength to give oracles and to deliver something. Just like I said, it's a lot of things that we're going to be sharing with you today, which is spiritual meanings that we don't normally share. But a lot of this stuff you'll get right back in in the SharePoint area. But that brass is giving you the strength. But then it tells you more, including 10, 10, the 10 is the plumb line, including iron, that's the reverence, including lead. Lead, think about it. Just think about lead. That means your captains, your princesses, your rulers. To guide many people. Right where? And rulers in the midst of the furnace. It's going to lead you right to, the, to, to, to where all afflictions, where all trials is going to happen. All these things is going to happen. So much of the silver is become defiled is what he's making sure we clear on. This is what we need to make sure we 100% clear on. And the reason why, because when it's dross, it has to go into these afflictions and trials to remove the dross. In all Israel is become dross. Think about that. All Israel is become draws. I'm going to show you. Um, we're going to look at something. Let's go over here to Genesis chapter 49. And I want to show you how we're going to look at this. In Genesis chapter 49, we're going to see right here. We're going to start there. This is a good part to start. Good place to start. It says Reuben. And this is going to actually help you to, to pull in what is firstborn and everything else because you you're going to see it here but we if you understand this part what i'm gonna go through now you'll get a lot of stuff later very easily but he's telling you reuben thou my firstborn my might in the beginning of my strength excellency and dignity in excellency of power but he's draws he's full of draws he's telling you unstable as water Thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed and defileth it. He went up to my couch. How did he defile it? And I'm going to show you that just to where we can be clear on some things. And we're going to go over here to Genesis. We're going to pick it up at chapter 35 and go down to verse 22. Just to make sure we, we all are clear here. And see what happened. And it tells, it tells us right there, it says, including it came to pass when Israel dwelt in the land that Reuben went and lay with, 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 with Bilhah, his father's concubine. That's interesting. That's the mother of Dan and Nephali. What, she's just, she's just being a whore. And people want to sit there and try to figure out why, why, why do people hold people as that? But it's telling you right if he defiled She's sitting there. She know clear as day that Reuben is her son's brothers. And she laid with him. She laid with this man. And he become draws. So that's, what, that's how he became draws. Because he went up to his father's couch and he laid with her. And he showed, and he showed that right there being nothing different than anyone else. Unstable, meaning in lightness and act with lightness, wavering, double-minded, that's him. 
that is him. And Baylor, just to show you, just to show you who Baylor is, I want to make sure. Uh, I'm going to use this one besides. Hey, no, it still shows right here. Because I, I need just 25. 35 and 25. There she go right here. It says in Sons of Baylor, Rachel's handmaid, Dan and Neph 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 Neftali. She's a whore. And you can't sugarcoat it no other way, but people sit there, oh, no, she's not she's telling you what she did. She, she laid with her son's brother. There's no other way to sugarcoat it. Then we have um, Simeon and Levi. They defiled themselves. How did they actually defile themselves and they become defiled in dross? How did they do that? Because what they did, they, they put out affliction when vengeance belongs to who? See, that's the point. Simeon and Levi, they went through a whole city. Actually, I'm going to show you that to where we can kind of get the, the uh, understanding of it. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 34. But we're going to pick it up at verse 25. And we'll see what they did. It says, And it came to pass on the third day, and what, what, what Simeon and Levi, they did. You know, it's kind of funny. They told the guys that they're going to be all together. They're going to be all one people. But all the men has to circumcise themselves. All the men has to be circumcised. And once all the men are circumcised, then what they can do is go through and, you know, they take their women and their women to take their women. They go back and forth and all that. That's basically what we're going to go on. They all be one big happy family. But Simeon and Levi are actually lying. They wouldn't be honest with them. What they were doing is, they knew on the third day them dudes gonna hit the most soreness of the of the, the private area. And then they can go through and now all they have to do if any of the women be combative, they can take out the women easier, but the men they can come through and take out everybody in the land. The kings made sure that everybody was gonna be circumcised. And that's what they made sure, and they made sure all the men circumcised themselves. So this is what happened. And then uh came to pass the third day. When they were sore, two of the sons of Jacob, there go the two boys, instruments of cruelty, is better known what Jacob calls them. Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came into the city boldly. Yeah, they can come in there boldly because everybody's hurting. And slew all the males. And they killed everybody. They was, they was coming through there. They were they taking, they taking no prisoners. And they said they slew uh, uh, Hamner and, and, and uh, Shisham, the son of with the edge of the sword, and that's, that's the king and the king's son, and took Dinah out of Shittim's house and went out. And the sons of Jacob came upon and slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. They, they, that's why they tell them, these, these boys are instruments of cruelty. And it goes on more. It says, they took their sheep, their, 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 their oxen, the asses, including that which was in the city and that was which in the field. They in a clean house. They tell me right up front what they did. And then they went more so in all their wealth and all their little ones took their wives, the captives, and spoiled even all that was in the house. They took everything. Then it gets even better. Just like I said, these boys are not playing. These, these are not ones you want to play with. Jacob, see, now this was crazy. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is the crazy part that I always had an issue with, even though it don't matter, but I had an issue with it. Because Jacob, when Simeon and Levi was talking to the kingdom about this, Jacob was sitting right there. He was sitting right there, but Jacob didn't say anything about what the, and he knew these boys was lying. Saying, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna uh, circumcise them, then we'll do all this." Jacob already knew that wasn't gonna happen, but Jacob was sitting there. <laughs> That's the point. He was sitting there when they was talking to him, 
It said, Jacob said unto Levi, uh, Simeon and Levi, ye had troubled me and make, make me stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the parasites, and, 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 and I being few in number, that shall gather themselves together and against me and, and slay me, and I be destroyed in all my house. Now, mind you, again, he knew what these boys was up to. He knew what they was up to. But he, he, he didn't do anything. But they responded they respond to their dad. They said, should we deal with our sisters? Our sister. Ask with the heart. You keep that in mind as we keep moving forward on Leah and, and, and Rachel. But Simeon and Levi, they were defiled based on this, on what they did. That was his instrument of cruelty in their habitation. And we see that's how they was defiled, those two brothers. But then we see Judah. We get down to Judah. Let me see. Uh, we want to get down to Judah. Now, it's telling you, it says, Judah, thou art whom thy brother shall it gonna come to pass. Shell praise. It's gonna happen. But he's defiled. He's defiled. But we, how, what is defiled with? How is he defiled? Well, I'm gonna show you how he's defiled. Cause he got problems. He has problems. We we need to see that. We'll find that in Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 15. right there slowfulness causes into a deep sleep in the idle soul shall suffer hunger that was judah's fault that was judah's fault actually it's even tell you go down to verse 24 you see it gets more it gets even more he said a slowful man hideth his hand his power in his bosom and would not so much as bring it out to his mouth again, Judah. But they sit there and people talk, oh, Judah, 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 Judah. No, no, Judah backed down. Joseph, though, actually one who stood up, but that's be we'll get to that. But Judah was defiled based on that. They were slowful, like an old lion. It actually, he tells you, he even tells you that. It says, Judah is a lion's whip. But it's telling you even more. Right here, he is a crouch as a lion in comparing an old lion, an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? He's defiled. He was defiled. We got, we got Dan also. We got to look at Dan. You know, let me get to Dan. And Dan, because that's the next one. I'm just doing them in, I'm doing them in age order. I'm not doing them in this one. I'm doing them in age order. Who was the firstborns and stuff like that. That's what I'm doing. So I'm not following this because this is not following age. So Dan, also, he, he, he was defiled and he actually got kicked out. Most of you guys know if you go look in the in the in the back, you'll see Dan is not part of the twelve tribes. Ephraim and Manasseh took took his place. But Dan called himself, he's gonna be a teacher. And he gonna teach the people silliness. And Dan shall judge his people. He's gonna teach his people comparing one of the tribes of Israel. Yeah. He 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 the man. We are the man. And it says Dan shall be a serpent. By the way, an order in the path, one that biteth the doctrine's heel. You, you, you see, Dan, Dan is shady. He's shady as all get out, but he got kicked out based on that. Based on that. Because that his writer is going to fall backwards. Exactly the point. So Dan is just as shady as they come. And then we got to look at the next one. We want to make sure we're going to look at Nephtali. Nephtali is the next one. He's the next oldest. We just going in we going in age order. 
Naphtali is a hen let loose. He giveth goodly words. People teach about this and the whole stupid thing, but he's a struggler and he wrestled and he falls among thorns and he's, he choked the word is what he did. He choked the word. For the things that is going on and he's wrestling about the things of the world and the things in the spiritual world. And he's polluted. He's full of dross. It's the same identical thing. So that's what that's his problem. We have Gad. That's the next one. Takes Otis. Gad is a troop and shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at last. But Gad, but Gad is in the money. He's gonna be overcome with actually wanna tell you what? I'm gonna check something. I'm gonna take you somewhere. Uh, let's go to Deuteronomy and Deuteronomy chapter 28 and we're going to look at verse 52 verse 52 and it's right here and this is Gad to, to the letter it said it should come it, it, it's, uh, he shall besiege thee in thy gates until thy High fence, thy high and fence walls come down, wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Spirit of thy God giveth thee. That, that's him to the, to the T. To the letter. But. <laughs> he's, he's a trip. He is a trip. And, and and this is this is this is this is the big boy. He's he's a heavyweight in deceiving. He was a heavyweight in being polluted. And this is out of Asher. His bread. You see you you see what it's saying. Out of Asher, his bread. Do anybody pay attention? You have anybody really paid attention? How you say his bread shall be fat. That's letting you know. Asher got his own doctrine. Have anybody ever noticed that? Asher, this this is right right there. It's, you can't you can't you can't change it because it's right there. It says out of Asher his bread, his own knowledge, his own understanding, his own way is gonna gonna shall be fat, including he shall yield royal dainties. It's a cold. That's a cold man. That's a cold man. Actually, I'm gonna show you something about about him. He's not he's not one to be played with. And a lot of us is caught up in in his doctrines right to this day. A lot of us caught up in his doctrine. When you look at this, I'm gonna show you something that's really weird, but it's not weird. And you go through here, and as we look at this as a whole, we we not gonna have to read it all, but I'm gonna show you something. As the middle, as um. I'm highlighting that because we're going to come to it because I want you to see something. You see in verse 6 in Genesis chapter 10, but we're going to focus on 10, 10, but I, but I highlighted Genesis 10, I highlighted Genesis 10, 10, but I want you to see something in Genesis 10, 6. I want you to understand what we're talking about. And when you look at Genesis 10, 6, it says the sons of Ham, Cush and, and Mizraim and Put. You see how he's naming people? He's going to go down. Now, I highlighted where it's going to talk about Asher in one second. Actually, this part I don't want. Let me take this part out. One second. I want to take that part out. Uh, let me clear that page and put it back in. Because I only want that. I want that one part. So this is the part I want. That's the part I want. So that's why I'm doing that. Okay. Now you see right here is where they're talking about the children of, of Ham. Now when you get past 11 and 12, it starts talking about Asher. We're going to read Asher, but when it goes back to 13, it starts going back again. It starts repeating. Now it's talking back about Ham's children. Because it don't start talking about Shem's children till you get to verse 21. That's when you start talking about Shem's children. 
in Shem's children, here's Asher here. But Asher left. And it's just noted here, just for you to keep that in mind. So it said, out of the land went forth Asher and built Nineveh, the city with Bath and Khalid. And he started naming all, he built this. And he's telling you why. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat. His covering is going to be fat. He's telling you what's going on here. He's going to have his own city. He's going to have his own thing. That's, that's, that's why you have these Assyrians and all. That's why you have this stuff. And people get that mixed up. And he's 100% polluted. <laughs> all polluted. And then we have our boy Issachar. Where people are trying to sit there and say these are uh, Mexicans, and it's not true. All of them look the same. And you see here it says, Issachar is a strong ass crouching down between two borders. Exactly what's going on. He, you can find him, he's a worker between two borders. Let's find out why Asher, I mean, uh, Issachar is being seen in that manner. And we'll see he's working between two borders. That's him. And you'll see it here. In Micah chapter 3, you'll find this, and we use it all the time. And you'll see the two borders he's working in. He's working in these two borders. It says the heads there are judged for reward. We were supposed to be judging for a penny. <laughs> we're supposed to be judging, teaching for a penny. His priests, the mediaries, thereof teach for hire which is supposed to be for one penny and the prophets thereof divine for money yet they would lean upon the spirit of God and say is not the Lord among us dwelling between these two borders I think not even though I know not but I'm just being I think not just being sarcastic but polluted he is polluted then we have old boy Zublin. Zublin, we got to go up. He's the next oldest right up here. Zublin shall dwell in the haven at, at the sea of the sea and shall be for a haven of ships. Exactly the point. <laughs> exactly the point. He's one of the ones help put a lot of people into these, these places, these buildings. Zubalin. He's the fisher of plenty. He plays a hunting. And it actually, we showed that earlier. And, and he's the one out there. He's the one that puts in the work. He puts in a lot of good work for for Satan. You see him, you see him right here. He tells you clearly what they what they what they're about. In in Psalms chapter 104, and we're gonna look at this again in verse 26. There go those ships. That Zublin, he looks to, to get you in the, in the, the sea with those haven of ships. There's that Leviathan. That's who he's doing. That's who he's putting in work for. That Zublin. Now, we come down to the 11th child. But the thing is, no matter what, he still had to be thrown in the furnace with the brothers. So that's what we really want to understand here on how that actually works. He still had to be thrown in the same furnace. And when you look at that, you see Joseph is a fruitful broth. He's a fruitful, even the fruitful broth by the well, whose branches run over the wall. That's, that's, that's him. Meaning you can see him, he's in the son of exhortation. He's the son that a prophecy. See, God sent Joseph in to hell first. Actually, let me show you this way you'll see where I'm coming from. Let's go to Genesis. We're going to look at this. Genesis chapter 45. We're going to pick it up at verse 5. And same thing. We've seen some of this already, but we want to sit there and see what goes on. So even though he has run up over the wall, we want to see what happened. Because as I said, he told his brothers, he said, Now for that reason, be not grieved nor angry with yourself that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. And he tells more. He says, For these two years have famine been in the land, and yet there 
on five years. Some of this five more. In which there shall neither be earring or harvest. Some right up front. What's going to be happening and how it's going to happen and what he's going to do. He said, including God sent me before you. So God sent me before you to preserve you, a postery in the earth, and to save your lives by this great deliverance. He's telling right up front. Now, even though God increased you and Joseph was sent first, Yahawashai, the same you see with Yahawashai, Yahawashai couldn't assemble his disciples before he went in. The same as Joseph couldn't assemble his disciples before he went in. The same thing, it was 12 of them, it was 12 disciples. Well, we'll, we'll start getting all that in a minute. But the same thing, he had to go ahead. He had to go ahead. Let's look at some of that and see what's going on. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Now, after he was baptized, and he had to go ahead. He had to go ahead of them. It says, then Yahweh was led up by the, of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Had to. Had to happen. Joseph had to go. He Joseph didn't have no choice. He had to go there. There was no choice in the matter. He had to go. You can't put the cart before the horse. He had to go there to see what would Joseph going to do? If you would have sent Reuben there, the firstborn child of flesh, <clears throat> and that, that, that queen would have told, told, told him to come lay with me, I can almost guarantee you that would be 100% he would have been laying with her. So we have to look at that in its fullness on what was going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. First be proven. First, you have to be proven. In proving some people of the flesh, in flesh, we got to remember what's going on. But to receive the double portion, let's, let's look at something. Let's go somewhere. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 48. Let's go somewhere. Let me do this because this probably helps us out a lot more. Genesis 48, we're going to pick it up at verse three verse three we want to see something in verse three we're going to see this and you'll see what's going on with joseph it says and jacob said to joseph the almighty god appeared unto me at Luz, in the land of canaan and blessed me and gave me wisdom came there now Joseph wasn't full of draws, but he had to still go in the furnace. It's no pattern. It's no, he still had to go into the affliction, in the trials, no matter what. Even though he went in there, he came out with no draws. That's the point. But we're going to get to that. And he said to him, He said unto me, Remember, I make thee fruitful, including multiply thee, so he got to multiply. He have to. And make thee fruitful and multiply thee and make thee a multitude of people. And will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. You know, watch what he says. It's really key on what we're going to start understanding between what's happening. Because this man here is from Rachel, not from Leah. But we got to start figuring out what's going on. It's telling us right here. It says, and now thy two sons, because he had two, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of bondage before I came unto thee in bondage, are mine. Now they're his, they're Jacob's, they're Israel's. Israel's, they belong to. Now they belong as Jehovah's servants. They're mine. He says, comparing Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. So he's saying the same way Reuben and Simeon, those are, them two boys are my boys.
He's telling you this is right up front. All jokes aside, he he's not playing. And and then you have um you have a uh, well, let me go back here. You have Genesis. I was gonna go back to Genesis. Cause we still we still didn't get um we still didn't get uh Benjamin. And that's the last son. But but we'll deal with Benjamin real quick. Cause Benjamin is real is real quick here. Benjamin. Raven as a wolf. It's Benjamin. Straight up front. All jokes aside. And he become draws behind that because he, he's in he's into spoiling prey also. He's the same way. So all these boys are draws, but one, even though we have to still keep ourselves as a whole. That's why I always say, as a whole, we always we always going to get punished as a whole. In Ezekiel chapter twenty two, it clears up a little bit more. Well, good here, Ezekiel chapter twenty two. Looking at verse twenty, it tells us this. It explains it to us. It says, "Comparing they gather silver." You see how he's saying it. You can gather silver, people, spirits, including brass, including iron, including lead, including tin, into the midst of the furnace. You see how he's doing it? To blow the fire upon it, to melt it, semicolon, for a thought. We can unpack it. We can make sure we're clear on this now. Because the brass is talking about give strength of the oracles to deliver this. And then we know the tin is a plumb line. We went through that. We know iron is a reverence. We know lead is the rulers and king. And that tin is that plumb line. For these people who's impure and reprobate, they can be on the one side. They got to go into the midst of the furnace. They got to go into the affliction and the trials. And it's mainly, he's telling you, to blow. He got to blow up on it. Telling you to blow the fire. And he gonna blow the fire, meaning that blow is the signal, the war cry. Actually, let's see. Let's let's go here. Let's make sure we get this. Wisdom of Solomon, one that we use all the time, 1815, tells us. It's a war. It's a war we gotta deal with. Thy almighty word leap down out of heaven. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18, verse 15. Out of thy royal throne as a fierce man of war into the midst of the land of destruction. Exactly what's going on. And he's got to take you here. And he's going to blow. The desire upon it. It's what he's doing. He's going to blow the desire upon it. You see what's going to happen. And he tells us more as he do. He says to melt it. Semicolon again. That's a full thought. To melt it means he got to refile it. He got to refine it, dissolve all the impurities within the silver that has dross. All of it. More, verse 21. Yea, I will gather you and blow, again, upon you the fire of my wrath. See, he's being real clear. <clears throat> the the punishment and the judgment, the doctrines and the teachings, what he's talking about of his wrath. And ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. So if it's dross there, he have to put you in. So you have to go in the furnace. You have to go there. There's no way around it. And we, you can't take out one piece. If you and sisters might know this better than brothers. But let's say just the middle part of the cake is, is is not cooked. Just the middle part. Do you take out that part that part and put it back in the oven? Do you put the whole cake back in the oven? If one piece of the chicken is not c- fully cooked, do you just cut off that one piece of that uncooked chicken and put that back in the pan? Or do you put the whole leg back in the pan? Common point: If two beans in the pot is not fully cooked, 
do you just take out those two beans that's not fully cooked and cook those? No. You're going to put the whole thing back in there. The children of Israel is one. And we're going to be treated as the one. We're going to be treated as that. That's the point that he's making. So he's going to blow upon the fire thereof in his wrath. And ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. In the midst. For all people to see. For all people to see this. And <laughs> how many women, and men, men, men too, because we got, because me personally, I have an uncle who was a, who was a chef and he had three boys and he had three boys and three girls but he was a chef and and he's in his 90s now but he's an outstanding cook as well as his sons they was outstanding many of them became chefs and they just cooked better than they, they sisters including their mother and um so I want to retract some of that so men and women if you have a um, oven with a window, and a lot of ovens like that, new even spread, they start doing a so you can see in there, so you can see the progressions of what you're cooking, how it's coming along. Just put yes or no in there. If you got it, yes. And if you don't, no. We get it. But I want you to understand why he's saying that. He got to put you in the midst there. He got to put you amongst all people. He want everybody to see it what's going on you want everybody to see this and we, we got a lot of people who got the windows so so you're going to understand me you should get me 100 percent what i'm getting ready to say <laughs> yeah because everybody only you only you only got like one person who don't have a window but they still should get it but everybody who has a window in their oven should understand 100 percent what's getting ready to come out of my mouth and the reason he making this statement here he said, I will gather you and blow upon you the fire, his desire, and everybody's going to see it. So I just want to make sure it's in everybody don't know. We all, we all, we all on this, we all on the same boat. Each and every one of us, we on the same boat together. Me included. I'm not, in, I'm not excluded from none of this stuff. So I want to show you something and, and make sure you clearly get but why, why he's saying this and why Joseph even had to go into captivity. We want to see all this together. We're going to see this and we'll find that in Second Chronicles. Chapter 7, verse 21. We're going to see it. It's going to start there. Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 21. We're going to look at this. And um, we'll see it right there. And it tells us, it says, including this house which is high shall be an astonishment this house which is high shall be an astonishment y'all 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 sit down all all israel just sit down just sit down a minute because it might be kind of tough to take but what i'm gonna say but what i'm getting ready to say we all need to be sitting down just make sure everybody is sitting down so he's telling us right here tucked away right here he says to the house which is on high that's you everybody who's saying claiming to be a Hebrew everybody claiming the children of Israel say yes just say yes if you are you are if you're not that's cool that's cool too but if you are just put yes we're going to do this again. We're going to go through that part again. And we got, we got yes is coming. Yes is is coming. Do you see them flowing through? So we shouldn't have no problem. <laughs> they coming through again. So we shouldn't have no problem. None. What I'm getting ready to say all the way through. Let's look at this together. Okay. It's saying now the house which is on high, she'll be an astonishment. So 
we shouldn't have no issue on what he's going to be saying here. None. He says, and everyone that passeth by, they, they, they looking in the oven. See, they outside the oven. We in the oven. They outside the furnace. We're in the furnace. I want you to clearly get what I'm saying. So they can turn the light on and look in there at us as we in the oven. So when they pass by, they should say, why had the spirit of God done this land, including until this house? Why? Some of them is cooked. Some of them is done. But why did he have to put the whole loaf back in the oven? It's right here. It's right here. We can't get around it. So the same thing is, is why y'all might say sometimes I talk with an attitude because we all in this together. And it's, sometimes it's irritating because we'll sit there and play. We, we like to play foolish. So I get thrown in the oven with you just like everybody else. I don't, I don't get, I don't get sugar. I don't get no preferential treatment. So verse 22 it tells us, it tells us, it says, and it shall come, it shall be answered. It shall be answered. <laughs> it's going to be answered. Why are busters in this dang furnace? Because they forsook the spirit of God of their fathers. All our butts is stuck back in this dang furnace. So every time we all as a whole, just, just, just picture this as we as a, as a whole we in this we we in this pot every time somebody get out of out of order most high don't put just that one piece back in the oven he put all of us back in the oven to either that uh, either you're gonna burn out <laughs> or you're gonna die then he takes it out and he checks it again it sees all the impurities out. So some of us have died. Some of us going to die of uh, illnesses. Some of us going to die of diseases. Some of us going to die by killed by, by murder, killings, all different types of things. And he's not, he's not curious about that because he don't, he's not the, he's not the guy to flesh. Keep that in mind. So as he's sitting there and he, we forsook God in in meaning, when you don't know, forsook, it's telling you he ab we abandoned God. We abandoned him. So what he do, and he already promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He already promised he's gonna do something. So he gotta he gotta keep making us right. So he's saying it right here. He says, so we forsook the spirit of, of God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and lay hold to other gods. Exactly what we did. That's what I said. We can't get around it. All of us, if not every one of us, has been members or part of a building they call the church. Walking in there with a Bible. Having the same book in our hand with the scripture saying, Christ do not dwell in buildings made with hands. It's in our hand. In our hand. And we'll sit there, oh, Christ, I'm, I'm the temple God. We'll quote it. We'll quote the verse and walk in that building. Walk in the building and think nothing about it. So <laughs> they, people want to know. He answered. We were so God. So, and we took hold of other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore, he had brought all, you see, he had brought all this evil upon them. And it's for everybody to see. So when we look in the United States, we go look in other countries, we go look in other places, and we all at the bottom of the totem pole. Now you know why. We in the oven in the United States, we're in the oven in, in Africa, we're in the oven in Australia, we're in the oven in the UK, we're in the oven in the Bahamas, we're in the oven in the Caribbean. We, we, we in the oven every time you take us out and we go right back in the oven 
that's what's happening. <laughs> so I'm telling you, so telling you, it's kind of hard to take, but 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 this is what we got to go through. This is what we're going through. And, and now let's go back over here. We're gonna look at this a little bit closer. Let's look at this a little bit closer. So now we kind of understand as a whole what's what's happening here. So let's go back over here to Isaiah chapter seven. We're going to pick this up at verse 21. Verse 21, we want to see. It says uh, right here, and it's a full thought. It's a full thought deal. It says, it should come to pass in that day that a man, a man shall nourish a young cow into sheep. So we should get that. We should get that because we just went through it. We want to pull up another part want to pull up some some part of the law we want to see this in Deuteronomy chapter 21 to help us out a lot more in verse 15 now here's our keys here's some more keys to where I need you to make sure you take a closer look and and please understand what's coming out of my mouth it says if a man have two wives a cow and a sheep one beloved and the other hated. Now this, if y'all need me to, because we're going to go into some, some crazy parts of the water. If we need to, I will pull up a, um, I'll pull up uh, my chalkboard if I need to. I want to make sure you get this. That's, that's my deal all the time. I always want to make sure people get this. It says one hated, uh, the the other, one one beloved and the other hated. They have borne him children. Now they both of them bore him children. Both the beloved, including the hated, including if the firstborn son be heirs that was hated, be hers that was hated. So we have Jacob had two wives. So he had wives is telling you bearers of fruit. That's all you got to remember. He had two bearers of fruit. One bearer is love. That's Rachel. That's a sheep. The other bearer hated, despised, that is the cow. Both bear children beloved and hated. Proven. Proving that the firstborn belongs to the one that is hated. But we're missing some because the hated, the firstborn child was actually from Leah. Everybody with me? Cause I'm telling you, because it's going to get hairy. And if you, if you don't get it now, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be extremely hard for you to get it later. That's why I said we have to do all that, all that prep to get here. But some people, they, 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 they come to these points to where they're so proud, they say nothing. And then they, they don't get it later. And then later on, they'll try to ask privately, and I, then I don't answer. But the main thing is, we want to understand what's going on here. Because it's going to get kind of crazy. But every part, we're going to go through here. And that's why I say, if I need to go through the, the board, I do it. Because it's going to get more crazy. We're going to go through it. In verse 16, it says, Then shall, then it shall be when he maketh his sons, sons, you see what's going on? When he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. This is where I can say 99.9% .9 of all people get confusing. Because he's telling you something the way it's written or how some people might see it. It's telling you exactly what it is, but people will read past it so fast we're not getting it. The beloved child 
the beloved child was from Rachel. Jacob could not make him the firstborn to inherit the things which he possessed on the earth. He cannot do it. It's impossible. Because the firstborn is Reuben. Reuben of the flesh is going to obtain all the rights of his father. That is on the earth. You won't see nowhere where you see where anyone else is getting what Jacob had. You don't see no discussion. Nowhere. Joseph was Rachel's, but he was the 11th child born from Jacob. I want you to keep it this, really keep this in mind. So when you look at that, Rachel could not even put him before Reuben. However, that was in these that Joseph, what he had done, was the firstborn. It switched. It switched. Let's look at it again real close and, and make sure we get it. That's why I'm trying to take my time and make sure we get it. It says, The beloved before the firstborn son of the hated, which is indeed in works the firstborn. So the one who indeed is the firstborn. So in flesh, was the firstborn according to flesh because in deeds in the works of the flesh was the firstborn which was Reuben. The deeds in the works of the spirit was the firstborn was Joseph. Everybody with me? I want to make sure we get this. That's why he's saying and he was hated. But Joseph still couldn't change it. No, I mean Jacob still couldn't change this. So then it made him the firstborn no matter what. No matter what, he was made the firstborn. That's the point. That's why a lot of people miss this. Because that's why he's telling you, and all we're looking at is indeed. That's in works. It's the one that is firstborn. Joseph, I mean Jacob and, and, and Leah produce Reuben. Firstborn. Period. Bottom line, no argument. That's the firstborn son. Everything goes to him according to the flesh, period. He changed his name, well, God changed his name to Israel. And Israel had to have a firstborn son also, which was Joseph. He became, in works, the firstborn, but he was still hated in the womb with his brothers. So while he was still in the womb with his brothers, while they was all together, Joseph was the first one that came out of the womb. And he went into bondage immediately. So then as the other ones start being born, Joseph is the firstborn son, according to the spirit. This... Look at this, and we're going to see, he even blesses him. We're going to see this, and we'll see how that works out. Let's go over here to Genesis, and we're going to go to Genesis chapter 48. We're going to see that in Genesis 48, verse 20. 48, verse 20. We'll see it. And you're going to see he blessed Joe. You see it's no, no qualms about this. It says, and he... And he blessed them that day, saying, <clears throat> in, in thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim, including as Manasseh. God make thee as Ephraim, as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. But watch what he did. Watch what he did. He set the youngest before the oldest, but let's see what he did. Israel, you see he's not saying Jacob. Israel, not Jacob. Israel speaking, who, changed, who his name changed to. Not Jacob. Israel said unto Joseph, remember 
I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again into the land of your fathers. Watch what he says here. And he's going to make sure this is clear. Moreover, I have given ye to thee one portion above thy brothers. He got the double portion. It was Joseph, the firstborn of spirit. He got the double portion above his brother. He said this is even more, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword in my bow. That's something for each and every person need to go and think about. Every person need to sit down and consider on what's going on, on how this works out. Because this is telling you a lot on what's happening. And what we need to think on is Jacob took something from the Amorite. He took something from the Amorite. So same thing. We don't have the time to finish it up. But like I said, this this is this is going to be one we got to pick it up next week. And it's going to get into it because just like I said, this Leah and Rachel is way bigger than what we think it is. But it's telling the story and it's unraveling for us to understand the word of God. And we have to look at this similitude in a very close way to understand what, what he was saying to where we get it. So the same thing, as I said, if you look down uh, for next week, we're going to be finishing this. It's parable, but you have everything in your bag to which you can do the studies now, to once we start talking next week, you should be able to get 100%. And you will know, if you don't do the study, you ain't gonna understand it. You ain't gonna get it. And if it's just interesting to you, then that's telling me right then, you don't get it. If it's interesting, then you don't get it. Because it shouldn't be interesting. It should give you understanding. So the thing is, what we're going to do, we're going to get ready to go in the back area because, as I said, we're going to, with people who, who uh, want to go in and start doing their self-studies based on getting all the spiritual meanings and everything that's that's there on um, on our SharePoint site to where you can do all your self-studies there. We're going to have specialized teachings with all your with spiritual meanings and other things and stuff that we have. They'll be set there. And... But the main thing is, you're going to be. It's going to require you to have a um, a KJBU email. So the same with my uh, seniors. If they come in the back, we're going to make sure that happens. But then, other than that, we're going to make sure everybody else who who needs one, and that people that's already signed up, we're going to make sure that these people can get signed up with the KJBU emails because we'll be releasing this in in the in less than really about two weeks. And we want to make sure that people can properly go in there. We want to make sure people have everything they need to go in there. So with that, you look down in the description, you'll see it's a meeting for that, that, that uh, where you can come into it. It says KJBU emails meeting. That's what it's for. For you to come back there the way you can get your email. And we want to make sure our older people, our seniors, can make sure they have them. If you're another person, you're a visitor over here, that you come over here, and we see you in here all the time, you're always saying shalom, please come back there and you, you show your face, and that's an easier way to where you can get, actually get the email to where we know you are, to where you can get access. So it's a simpler way to do it because people who we normally see here, and we see you um, um, greeting when you're coming in, you're more than welcome to come in the back, show your face, you know, and you just because we just want to know who we're who we dealing with. That's it. So you're more than welcome to do it and to join us. But other than that, we we want to end here. And we're going to get ready for the, um, get ready to go in the back and take care of that. So I say to each and every person, until next time, hopefully you go through this. And if you still was kind of mixed on this, please go through the other teaching and make sure you get that thing. Make sure you get that and, and make sure you understand what was happening. So with that, I say to each and every person, until next time, I say to each and every one of you guys, 
שלנו.